Hello and welcome. Try this problem out and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so it says to the nearest tenth, what the value of x that satisfies this equation is which of the following? Okay, so I like this problem because it, it reminds me that algebra can't solve everything. And that also feels kind of mysterious to me because algebra sometimes feels very powerful and then you start to encounter problems where the algebra just doesn't take you where you need to go. And that makes me wonder, will anyone ever find a way to solve this algebraically? Because I'd love to hear it. Um, but let's take a look at why I think it's really difficult to use the algebra to solve this. And, at, at cur and currently, I don't think there is a way to do it algebraically. So what would I do to solve this problem? Well, I've got an exponent up here as a variable, so I feel inclined to take the logarithm of both sides. And I'll take the log base 2. That is usually helpful to take the base of the base I'm given. So I'm going to write this out. Log base 2 of 2 to the x equals the log base 2 of negative 2x plus 11. Okay. So on this left-hand side, 2, this is our base. 2 to what power is 2 to the x? Well, that's just x. And then you feel like, okay, I'm solving this thing. But then on the right-hand side, there is no known law of exponents that allows us to break this thing any further. And we've kind of had this x, like, trapped inside our parentheses. And that tells me that, okay, there's no way to get this x out over here, and I've got an x over here. There's no way to bring it all together, right? And when that happens in math, when I say, okay, the algebra is not working, what's my next tool that I can think of? Well, for most cases, it's graphing. So this is not a problem to solve algebraically. Instead, I'm, I want to think, how can I solve this graphic, graphically? What can I do to solve this graphically? It's a really big dot for the I right there. Um, well, before we even get into the exact answer of it, let's just say let's just say we should think about what's happening. So if we sketch out our y and our x-axis, and we think about what's going on here, oops, um, I would say, well, we've got to find when 2 to the x equals negative 2x plus 11. So I can actually think, treat these as, as like two different functions. So one function would be a linear function, and it has an intercept of 11. So I'm going to say that this is about 11 right here. And then its slope is negative 2, so it's going down 2 over 1. Remember, this number is the slope. So it's something. I mean, the exact scale right, doesn't really matter. It's some kind of line that has a negative slope and an intercept of 11. The other, other one is exponential. It's 2 to the x. So I know it's going to cross at 0, 1, because 2 to the 0 is 1. It's going to go up from there. And I'm thinking, OK, I actually know a lot about this problem. I know they are probably going to cross in the first axis. And I would say, excuse me, definitely going to cross, because one line has an intercept of 11 that comes down, and the other one has an intercept of 0, 1, and then goes up. So they're going to cross somewhere. And all I have to do is find the value of that point. So if you press y equals, we can graph these fairly quickly. We have negative 2x plus 11, that's my line, and then 2 to the power of x here, and I go to graph, and I see my line, and there's my exponential function, and they're crossing. So I go to second trace, choice 5 is intersect. It's should go my first curve and second curve. I can't see it right now because x is on 20, so let me pull this back a little bit here until we reach a situation where we can see the cursor. Oh, there it is. Okay, so first curve is actually on a line, that's okay. And then it jumps to my second curve automatically, hit enter, enter, and I should get it. And there it is, 2.557193. So it just on the first curve and then it hopped to the second. If it didn't, I can toggle it up and down and then hit it a third time to find their intersection. Now this right here, if we don't like it, we can change the window a little bit. Usually I have to hit zoom 6 first, and see if that helps me. Zoom 6 is a standard zoom, and that's a little bit cleaner. So if I go to second to trace again, I'll show you what happens here. Hit choice 5. Okay, so we're at 0. About 0.4. There it is. Hit enter. And then see it jumps to the second curve right there. If, it's, if it doesn't do that automatically, you can press up and down to toggle back and forth. Now it has my second curve, enter. And then for guess, I just enter a third time. It gives me good approximations, 2.55. All right, so let me go back here. 
and that is choice two. So I, I think that in general you'll find if you see an exponential equation and a linear equation and you can't just isolate your exponent or exponential term um, and condense all the variables into that one term. Like So there's a, here's my exponential term isolated, but there's still this exponent over there. If that happens, you can expect to solve it graphically and not algebraically. And I think the mystery here is how could we use the algebra? There must be a way. And I look forward to finding that way or hearing from someone who has some ideas on it. All right, thank you.